Today we're covering how to cut someone out from the background and do minor retouching. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. A few weeks ago we did some employee headshots that were so much fun. Today we're editing Nick's shot. He was photographed on a white background. So I'm going to show you guys how to cut him out of the background. It's not perfectly white, so we're going to make sure that it is. And we're going to do some minor enhancements. He doesn't need much. He's already a cool dude. So we're going to get into it. <laughs> uh, here's our image. This is straight out of the camera. And uh, this was lit. You can check out our episode on, on um, actually how this was photographed and the lighting. But we use generally large bright lights or broad light sources. So he doesn't have a whole lot of shadows on him. And you can see for the most part, he's over top of our white backdrop. People, you photograph people on a backdrop usually because it makes them really easy to cut out. And uh, you can see his hand is off there a little bit. So not a huge deal, but um, his hand is off. So what I'm going to do, this background layer, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and double click on it. That'll turn it into a regular layer so now I can actually edit it. And I'm going to use my magic wand tool. So I'm going to hit W for the magic wand tool. And then you want to choose a tolerance uh, that is as high as you can go while still not like, not impeding or interfering with your subject. So you can see right here, it's only selecting this area right here. I, I want it a little bit more selected. So let's just bring our tolerance up to like 14 and see what that looks like. And I think it could go even farther up. There we go, something around 27. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna hit shift and click a couple times. But you wanna be able to do this in as few clicks as possible. Now, we're really fortunate because we have, um, <laughs> Daisy's helping us out with our magic wand tool. We're really fortunate because he's dark on a light backdrop, so it's really, really easy to do this. So we basically clicked a few times, and he's selected out there. So what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and I'm going to click on my layer mask button, and that's going to give us a layer mask of what um, of what was selected. Now I'm going to hit Command I on my layer mask, and what that's going to do is it's going to invert the layer mask. So that, now my layer mask looks like this. Okay. Now not perfect just yet. What I still need to do is uh, get rid of everything else. So I'm going to use my lasso tool here, just a regular lasso tool, and we're just going to cut out all this other stuff. There we go. Select that out, and then fill this with black here on my layer mask. So that's his. Oh, apparently that wasn't on black. If you're, if you're, um, if you need to switch to your default colors, just hit D for your default colors, and those will always be black and white. There we go. Let's cut that out. Now you can see his hand is going to be a little bit different. Um, that's just. I, it would have been nice if it was included, but he's jumping and sometimes those hard, things are hard to predict. So what we're going to do with his hand here is, well, you can use a few many you can use a few different tools. You can use something like the magnetic lasso tool, which should do a decent job like following around his, his fingers and things like that. Here we go. And if this doesn't work incredibly well, then you can always use like a manual lasso tool. And if that's not working well for you, then I would recommend a pen tool. But this looks like it's going to actually do pretty well. So basically with our magnetic lasso tool, you just click anywhere on your subject. And what it does is it finds the edges for you. And when it finds the edges, it makes all these little points here. If it makes a point that you don't really like, you can hit the backspace of the delete, the delete key and it'll just go back in time. There we go, just like that. And if you want to force a point, just click and then it will make a point for you. So right now I'm not clicking, I'm just moving the uh, moving my cursor around. All right, now this tool is not perfect. It's not going to be the best tool for the job every time, but it'll get you pretty close most of the time. All right, let's just hit enter there. That's a selection. And then here on our layer mask, we can just hit command delete to fill it with our background color. So that's decent. Let me go in here with the le regular lasso tool now, and we'll just select this area out. You could totally use a pen tool for this. I'm just going to use the lasso tool uh, because it's a little bit quicker and um, I feel decently comfortable with using it. When you're using a pen tablet, like the Wacom Intuos 4 small that I'm using, um, I don't get paid to say that. That's just the truth. That's what I use. Um, it, it makes this sort of thing a lot easier. There we go. We'll fill that out too. So now our subject's cut out from the background. How do we get him on a plain white background? It's really not hard. What we have to do is just create a new layer, and we have to fill that layer with white. So we can hit Command. Uh, delete if white is our foreground color and then we'll just bring that layer underneath our subject. So now our subject goes from this to that instantly and uh, because he is he's completely cut out from his background. This is the layer mask on our subject there. So 
What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and refine this edge because it's a little bit like jagged. You can see it's just a little bit jagged. So what we're gonna do is click on this layer mask, go to select, and then down to refine mask. And then I'm just gonna bring my feathering up a little bit and the contrast up to match it. And what this should do is hopefully like get rid of those like jagged areas. There we go. And that's okay. So you can see there's the before and the after. Still smooth with a hard edge, but it's gotten rid of all the jagged areas. So it's just a little bit better of a selection. All right, now, <laughs> now that we have our subject and he's on our white background, let's just go ahead and crop this a little bit different because it's just a little bit, um, it's not the best crop that it could be right now. There we go. Perfect, that looks a little bit better. And here on our white background, let's just fill that completely with white. So there we go, that's our subject now cut out completely on a white backdrop. And a couple other things that I wanna do. We're just gonna make him look just a little bit, um, just a little bit better. <laughs> he requested we give him a box cut. So uh, Nick, here's your box cut. Uh, you can do this either on this layer or you can create a duplicate layer and do it on that or you can make a stamp visible layer. Uh, but we're, what we're gonna be using is liquify tool and that is a quote unquote destructive tool. So based on however you decide to do it, um, is you're gonna get different results. What I'm gonna choose to do is I'm gonna make a duplicate of this layer and I'm gonna right click on now say apply layer mask. Okay, so I've got basically this layer and then another version of him. If I decide to move it around, it's just another version of him. There we go. And on this layer, what I'm gonna do is go to filter and we're gonna go down here to liquify. There we go. And I'm gonna zoom in and basically what we're gonna do is use this forward warp tool to now give him a, uh, give him a box cut. All right, let's just make our brush size a little bit larger. And I'm gonna start off on the left there and just kind of like pull up and uh, pull out just like that. All right, we'll make our brush a little bit smaller and pull that up right there. There we go. So you wanna start like from the inside working towards the outside if you possibly can. All right, and you can have a lot of fun with this. You can really just do whatever you want. I might give him horns or something like that just cause I think it'd be funny. But um, there we go. Looking a little bit better. Let's make our brush size a little bit bigger and get some like larger sculpting on there. All right, so if someone wants a box cut and they haven't grown it in just yet, you can be like, I got you. Let's do it in Photoshop. And then they'll be your best friend forever and ever. All right, we'll hit OK. And there we go. Now we have quite the box cut. There's a before and the after. Why not? It just looks clean. It looks really good. And, uh, and I like it. So the reason I did that on this layer is because you can't like undo that. So I just, I wanted the original to stick around. So now I've got the copy. It's, I can still move him around and things like that, but he does have that box cut and that's going to be applied to this layer permanently. So if I want, so this basically my undo is just the, the other layer, but you don't have to have that in there if you don't want it to be in there. Okay, this looks really good. I'm just gonna do a couple things to like kind of finish it off and then we'll be done. I'm gonna grab a hue saturation adjustment layer and hit option command G to make it only affect this layer. And we'll just bring our saturation down just a tad. There we go. So it's not, doesn't have that like real, you know, like that, that red to it. And then I think what we can do is just a little bit of dodging and burning. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command J on this layer, Option Command G to clip that to this layer as well. And then we're going to change this layer from soft light, okay? And then I'm gonna to go to Filter, Other, and then we're gonna to go to High Pass. There we go. And I just wanna choose something that helps the details stand out a little bit more. There we go. Something like that's just gonna help out a little bit more. And it's gonna look really good on his clothes. It might be too much like on his face. So we can use a layer mask on his face or other areas here and just paint it away a little bit invisible. You still want this visible over like his eyes, for instance, because that's really where, where this like shows up very well. It'll create a lot of detail right there in the eyes and it'll help like draw you right in. So there's the before and the after. Just a really, really quick solution there. Um, so that's it, cutting someone out of their background and uh, doing a little bit of liquefy to their hair and uh, now he's ready to go. So if you did decide to change this background or have it on transparent, like you could use this as a PNG for instance, it's completely on a transparent background. You can move them around, you could make a new background in here and you know, fill it with like a, a light pink if you wanted to do that too. So he's completely on a new background and uh, he's got a new haircut as well. That's pretty much it. So 
If you want to get a look like this where someone's completely cut out in white, just photograph them on white. Don't worry about getting the white to be perfect white. Just use that magic wand tool, strip them out, and then get pure 100% white behind them in Photoshop. It's going to make your job a lot easier. Thanks so much for watching Florin, guys. I hope this help, helped out with any questions you guys have. Get out there, shoot some cool stuff. Photograph some people on white and make them look like they're floating around in the air. It's awesome. Have fun. I'll flirt you later. Well, yeah, I wonder what I would look like with a box cut. Probably pretty awesome. For more information on this episode, go to flurn.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you as well as professional photographers. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.